welcome to Beyond the Red Carpet. Today I have Hallmark Channel superstar Brennan Elliott with me. Uh, Brennan, yeah. welcome, welcome from your house to mine. This yes. is, thing has been crazy, but you don't, I don't know if you realize this, you were my very first guest on this show. Oh, really? July 2018. Wow, it feels so much longer than that. <laughs> Is that good or bad? It feels like a, no, it feels like a long time ago, just because I feel like, you know, the world, we've been through so much that that's just, yeah. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day about uh, something that happened at Christmas last year, and I was like, man, that feels like 30 years ago. But yeah. um, no, good to be back with you under different uh, circumstances, but uh, yes. it's nice to see you all the same. Nice to see you. Uh, um, let me just say, you just recently returned from Canada from yes. taking two crossword puzzle crossword mysteries back to back yeah and the first one is not well you did four and five the first one number four will air on february 14th this month yeah valentine's day valentine's day yeah. good day for love i <laughs> think so uh i had john capellos um on one time and he plays yeah. your father in the show yeah. but he I was telling him that you and Lacey Chabert are like the at the time I said the Doris Day and Rock Hudson of Hallmark Channel I will I, take it I want to re revise that to the Meg Ryan Tom Hanks of Hallmark Channel I will take that even better I think Tom I Hanks think is one of my uh, favorite actors of all time for sure yeah you and Lacey are have great chemistry on screen I'm curious, when you're not filming, do you guys stay in touch? Yeah, we do actually. Our families are very close. Uh, we've had dinners with, uh, you know, obviously her daughter and, and my kids and, and um, her and I, um, you know, I know I don't want to sound cliche, but we're friends, you know, we're, we're very, very good friends. And that's obviously been developed through this, this journey of collaborating together and, and uh, you know, it's rare when you get to work with somebody that, you, you know, chemistry is a word that gets thrown around a lot for, it's a sexy word to use for people actually seeming like things are real or, you know, or what have you. And, um, and the chemistry is working with the, and you, you can't make that stuff happen. It just has to happen. And sometimes I, you know, I feel like I'm lucky enough that I've had, you know, fairly decent chemistry with everybody, but when you've done nine or 10 movies with someone, you're going to build that chemistry. And, and we've yeah. had an opportunity to do that. But off camera, I mean, you know, like we were shooting both films and then if we have time and, you know, we'll, we'll grab some lunch together or dinner or something, you know, we're, we're just good friends and we have a lot of love for each other as people and our families. I get along with her husband, great. He's a really, really fun, one of my favorite people and, and, um, and, uh, and their daughter's adorable. And, and so, yeah, you know, I've met her sister. I think I've met both her sisters, but she says I have, but I think I only remember the one, but yeah, she's just a really, really great human being and a lot of fun to work with. Well, that's cool. And I, I met your wife, Cammy. She's adorable. I love her. She's yeah, no, good. she's a special, uh, she's the, the strength behind it all for sure. She's a sweetie. Um, okay. So when you went up to Canada, you filmed these shows in Western Canada, not, not East. No. Uh, yeah. Like, um, Northern beast. Well, bank, uh, basically Surrey Langley area, which is Northern, uh, I think it's Northern, but anyway, it's, it's the out outskirts of downtown Vancouver. It's kind of like, you know, um, uh, the suburbs, I guess, is what we would call it. You had to go in quarantine before you all got together to produce, to, to make the show. And I know from reading your your social media during that time, it was it was frustrating. And yeah, quarantine, you know, I, 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 yeah, I mean, I thought quarantine would be a lot easier uh, just because I felt like we'd been in six, seven months of quarantine with, with everything going on. But, you know, you're in your own house, you get to see your family, you can kind of maybe go for a walk if you have to, keep a mask on, these kinds of things. But quarantine there was, um, or well, we're all going to be doing it here if we, you know, things don't, you know, change. But, you know, for the foreseeable future. But basically, I got there, got into a hotel, locked the door, and that was it for two weeks. I couldn't leave, I couldn't do anything. So I'd have, I would order um you know, I'd get my assistant to help me with certain things if I needed to order food or, or get some, I mean, anything, you know, and she was living in Toronto at the time because we'd moved from Toronto, the show to Vancouver. So, it, you know, my hands were tied a little bit here and there, but it gave me uh, it gave me some much needed alone time. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to, like, look at yourself in the mirror and, and analyze. You know, the thing is, after Francine, after about day eight or nine is when you start to get a little wiggy. You start to kind of like, 
you know, you're looking in the mirror and you're, anal- you're overanalyzing everything, you know, whether it's your life or is that, a, is that something on the floor? What is that? Or whatever. It's just, you start to kind of, so I have all the respect in the world for anybody who has to go through it. But like I said, I mean, it wasn't, you know, when it, when it finished, it was done and it was, it was a necessary evil that we have to do to stay healthy. And, you know, Lacey and I have a lot of, and John and Barbara, all four of us had to do it. And we take, you know, Lacey and I as, yeah, as kind of the, 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 you know, the, the EPs and two leads or whatever, kind of the face of the show, we want to make sure our crew's safe and, and healthy. And so we took, you know, we take that stuff very seriously. Right. Well, uh, when you were finished, you got two of them in the can at the same time, you know, one right after another. And I know somebody online asked you, is it hard to switch from one day to the next to from one, uh, show one one storyline flip right away and start another one without any downtime it was yeah. yeah it was tough I mean I had done two in a row and then one earlier in the year and Lacey was on four in a row and I remember we had a chat and and the thing about these two that was tough was that I think you know each one is its own movie its own kind of journey its own case mm-hmm. so as a detective, it was a little easier for me. And then I can just go from movie to movie as a case to a case. But that being said, um, when you're on almost, you know, 95, you know, Lacey and I are almost on every page and you kind of have to do that case. Then the next case happens. I think we had five days off or six days off. So we got a chance to get into that material. So it wasn't too, too, bit, too bad, but there are moments where you're in the scene and you're working with obviously like John or Barbara or whatever, and you're realizing, oh, this isn't, Oh, this isn't terminal descent. This is where it'll be dead. We get, it's a totally different case because you're in similar locations and, 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 you know, if you're in the precinct, you're dealing with a different case, but I just took it as a different case, but it was a lot of work and, and we had a lot of fun and uh, we had a great cast cast on both movies. I think the fans are going to really, really enjoy them. You know, obviously I really enjoyed Abracadabra and thought we finally found our voice and, and hopefully these two, I mean, obviously moving to Vancouver, we're still kind of building crew and cat, uh, you know, crew, and, you know, I wanted to really kind of build that family where you have our cast and then we, we embrace these, exec, you know, these um, guest cast and we have similar crew. Maybe we alternate our directors or, but uh, um, yeah, it was a lot of work and it was fun. And I think the fans are going to be really, really excited now that we're all out of the, uh, I think, you know, a little bit of mystery and a little bit of romance and a little bit of humor and all those kinds of things that these kinds of wheelhouses bring is, is much needed. Uh, much needed uh, fare right now on the television for what we're going through. So I, I, I take, I, you know, I'm an honor to be a part of something that gives people a reprieve. Well, okay. So number four airs on Valentine's day, which is the mm-hmm. month that this, this show is going to air. Um, do you have an air date for five? We do not yet. I mean, the rumor is possibly sometime in April, but we don't, we don't have a, we're just finishing. We just actually yesterday sent it up to the network for some notes, you know, post notes. So, we're still a, a good month or two away from that one being totally ready, but I've seen some rough cuts and it's uh, what I like about our show is every movie is extremely different. You know, you don't, um, but not just a, a mystery show. It's right. the whole scope of it is very different. The relationships are different. Um, you know, it, it kind of each case taps into our personal relationship more and more and we get deeper and deeper. And I think the fans are going to be really excited by the end of these two. Cause uh, well, well, They've been clamoring like, sirs and things, and they're going to be like, on them. Your Brandy fans are followers no matter what, and uh, they just love you to bits. I, I think if I were an actor and had those kind of fans, I would just be so thrilled because they- well, I'm honored. It's humbling, Francine. It's, it's humbling. It's, I'm honored. I take it very seriously in regards to making sure that I bring my best regards. You know, people don't realize, I mean, you do, because you've been in the business for so long, probably on, on, on multiple levels, but- a good movie is not just because of a good performance or a good, uh, it's lit well, the director's amazing or the leads are wonderful. It starts with the script and that sometimes is really difficult to package and you need a good producing team and, and a good, um, you know, one of my mentors that, that passed away, sadly, Michael Ogans, I think we spoke briefly about him. He created the All of a Heart, the very first one, and Love You Like Christmas. He always said, I'd rather do one movie a year and do it well than do three and, and know I left a few on the table. So he really takes it seriously because he believes that when a fan comes and watches something good they're going to come back and so if i have a few fans out there that want to see me and you know, they want to see me brush my teeth or something <laughs> i will brush my teeth no i um they're they're fervent um they're passionate they tell you what they like i've always said they tell you what they don't like 
Um, and I have a lot of respect for, for Brennies, for Alma Hardy's, for Hardy's, for Sleuthers, for there's this new moniker. I don't know if that's the word moniker, but a new kind of thing where the people are calling us uh, Chib Elliot, Chibar and Elliot, Chib Elliot, oh, yeah. that's which cool. I find kind of interesting. So there's a lot of these fans that kind of congregate and they're very passionate. They want one of these every week, <laughs> these crossword mysteries. And well, well, also you mentioned all of my heart. I know you've done the three. Yep. Any idea if there's going to be more? And I know somebody online suggested uh, more of a series of those. And you no, know, we've been fighting. Yeah. That go because that that has so much to offer. We'd love to make it a series. We'd love to have a weekly series. You know, do 10, 12, 20 episodes, whatever season or whatever it is. Much like we did with Cedar Cove, or they're doing with Chesapeake. Or, mm -hmm. And um, but that's up to the network and and the powers to be there and, and and our bosses to come with a to come to us and say this is what we want to do. All of my heart does have something built in that that could be very successful, which we've we've traveled down that road. It's not off the table. Uh, it's still in discussions. Um, I know there is strong conversations of bannering about of possibly a fourth. I don't want to put out there we're having a fourth, but there's been conversations because, like I said, it gets back to the fans, you know, and they want to see more of it. And so, um, but I just, you know, I got to make sure if I do it, I'm not upstaged by a goat every movie, but I'm kidding. Um, I love those goats. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> They're so precious. Yeah. Uh, okay, so last year was the first time in a, a while you had a Christmas movie. It was Christmas in Vienna. Yeah, it was a couple. I didn't do one in 2019, and I did yeah. one in 2020, yeah. That was, that was cool. I really enjoyed that because of the scenery. And how long were you over there to film that one TV? Uh, well, I was over in, uh, in Vienna for a few weeks or two and a half weeks or whatever. We did the first half of the movie there. And then we had Christmas break and then we went to Budapest and did the rest of it in Romania. Um, and, uh, it, you know, it was fun. I mean, look, there's, there's, it was a different, it was an out of the box kind of Christmas movie in that it was, you know, I feel that, you know, we got a little pushback from some fans in regards to the Mark, the Mark character being a little standoffish. So the, the real thing that is really interesting is that that I played a, a character that I really truly felt had lost any ability to open his heart at all. I mean, when you lose someone that you love more than anything in the world and that person's gone and you're using your work and all the other distractions to keep yourself from dealing with real pain and then you fall in love with someone or start to feel that bubble again and you're scared, it can come across as standoffish. But really it's it's not at all. It's a man fighting with his inner demons to open his heart again. And I found that really interesting. Now, I don't, I know that's the sub storyline because the main storyline is obviously Tess's violin, but I think that one of the, if we were to maybe do it again is maybe switch the parts or maybe make, cause you know, I think watching a, a, a father of three go through the torture of trying to open his heart again and, and rebuild his family without, with the fear of, can he have hope that it'll work out uh, is interesting as well. And, so we try to give both stories to them and, and the fans seem to enjoy it, so. Well, you know what, that, that kind of is the same mentality that your Nanny Express uh, movie. Was. Absolutely. <clears throat> that's right, wow, that's a blast in the past. Wow, <laughs> I can't remember that. That was my very first Hallmark movie. Yeah, yeah that was my very cool. first one. Yeah, that was cool. Um, okay, so when you were in Vienna, and I know you and Lacey did a little, not Lacey, um, who was your co-star? Um, Sarah Drew for, yes. for Christmas in Vienna, yeah. When you, when you were in Vienna, you did a little get together for the, the, for the fans previewing the show and mm. saying all about, talking all about the, uh, the, the city and what's available in Christmas time. It just looked like a fabulous uh, place. Did you have any time to do sightseeing outside? A little bit. Of it? A little bit. I got there a few days earlier to learn, you know, to do some skating and we had some, some production things we had to go through. I wasn't a part of any producing of it, so it was not my movie. So I was just along to do my job. Um, but uh, I got a chance to see some things, not a lot, but I got a chance to really soak it up. It's a fabulous. Uh, Vienna is, um, it's with what they went through in the Second World War and having to rebuild that city, it almost looks like a set, the whole city. I mean, it doesn't look real. Some of the buildings are made out of like gold and it's just kind of a excuse me, a very overwhelming. It's a very different world. Um, Austria is obviously not, uh, you know, America. And it's, it's, it brings it with it such a, a zest for life and food and culture and music. And I'm not saying we don't have to hear, but it's just a different experience. And I'd never been over there. So, um, and it was you definitely right. a bucket list. 
the, every every scene looked like a set and it yeah. was you actually filmed it in, on location and it did yeah. look like it was all prepped for for the film. amazing and a lot of those locations are real buildings like the president's palace my 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 home um for the time period I, you know mark is living obviously in austria that, that home was the president of, of, of bucharest that was his wow. office and and that's like their kind of house and then you got to Schönbrunn. my very very first scene i shot was this the dance scene at the end of the movie uh, i had never met her we showed up i mean we did a read through but um i remember walking in and i had this little trailer and I was like, well, where's the set? And they said, it's right there in front of you. And it was the Schönbrunn, the huge yellow building, the big presidential palace or mayor's office. I don't know, I can't remember exactly what it was. And I thought, okay, this is a different experience. <laughs> this is gonna be, you know, the location is really the star of the movie. And, and, yeah. uh, and we try to embrace that and, 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 and uh, focus on that as much as we could. Without, you know, didn't want to take it away from that as much. That ice skating all around the city was just amazing. And that kind of makes me want to go. But, you know. You should go, Francine. It's really? amazing. Well, yeah. Oh, you should. Everything Definitely. opens up and travel opens up. We'll talk about it then. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you, 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 did, you don't film in order. And as an actor, I know you know each scene and then you, you mix and match them. Is it easier to film uh, something in sequence? Or, is, or does that really matter to you as a professional? I've never done it, so I don't know. Really? I mean, I've never had an opportunity where we shot the movie from page one to page 102 or 97 or 105 or whatever it is. Um, and that would just be very difficult and very costly to probably do because you're, you know, a lot of these shows are very location heavy. So whenever you get a location and at a certain time, that's when you film that scene. I mean, I remember even in Crossword, I shot 12 and a half pages one day all in the precinct. That's tough. That's yeah. when you're like, wow, okay, that's 12 pages of, and these are talking, you know, as the detective, he's just yapping and yapping the case and stuff and talking and talking. So those can be long, long days that you just fight through. Um, in Vienna, we were all over the place. I mean, we split it up with two locations, meaning Bucharest um, and Vienna. And um, yeah, I've never had an opportunity. I mean, obviously on, on stage and stuff, if you're doing, you know, Broadway or Broadway or any play, you, you know, you start from the beginning. Um, so it's been a long time since I've had that experience. If that happens, I'll let you know the difference. Okay. It might be, look, I think, in, I think instrumentally and emotionally as the character, it's a lot, it would be easier because you, you know where you are in the story and it's it, the through line is just, just going on. You're being affected every day by doing, you know, in, in chronological order. Um, now that seems so like if you have not worked with your co-star in the past and don't know them that well, I think that would, would oh, totally. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 well, the second scene I shot, I think, was when I finally saw her and we were clapping and they were doing the, the wreath ceremony and I had just bumped into her. So that, or, that was very real. I don't know her that well. There's an awkwardness. There's an uncomfortability. And I, as an actor, try to make everything seem like it's happening for the first time and, and make it look real and honest and human and whatever. And I think a lot of that available stimulus was there is that I don't know you. Uh, you seem fun. I'm too afraid, you know. <laughs> Um, I don't want to open up. I want to in my mind, but my heart's just too afraid, you know, and, and, you know, something that I don't think people realize not to get too personal, but, you know, when I got the, when I got the offer to do that, there'd been some other things to look at. And I picked that one because I felt like I really, really, you know, there's not a lot of people that talk about this with people that have gone through love and had been heartbroken. And how do you get back? They just always expect you to get back. Well, it doesn't work like that. You know what I mean? So, um, and my wife and I, to her testament, she had said, you know, you know, look, our family has been through a battle and your heart gets really hardened and, and scared and you protect yourself. And now with things looking up and more positive familiarly with her, with her, um, you know, she went through a, a really illness that scared us. And now things are looking so good. How do you have hope again? How do you believe, yeah. you know, hey, yeah, let's go to dinner. It's great. And without obviously COVID and it being normal again. And that's been really, really scary and, and hard for me to do as a, as a human being and as an instrument. And that I was reading the page saying that's very similar to what I'm going through. And that was kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to take it or had gone through that. I'm not through that anymore. And but I find that very wife, interesting. Yeah, your wife did have a very tr uh, traumatic health. Uh, scare. Yes, for sure. For yeah. For and it made me and it made me, you know, as, a, as her husband and as her you know, partner 
take a step back and, and, and not that you, you lose the feeling of love or your heart is closed. You don't want to be that person. It's that when you open your heart and you're full of love and you're, you, you have hope again, you let yourself, you open yourself up to be hurt. You know what I mean? And that's what Mark is scared of happening again. And, you know, so um, there has been fans, well, he seems standoffish and hot and cold. Well, you don't know the story deep enough then, because that's exactly what you would be if you were, you know, just anybody goes through a, a death, um, a divorce. I mean, it's the transition back to feeling healthy and healing. That's what I wanted to talk about. That's what I wanted people to see. And I know that's not really maybe the hallmark. It's not really, you know, someone, this happens and then you move on. Everything's great. Uh, this had a little more of that honest look at what that transition is. And, and um, I think it's a movie that needs to be seen a few more times. It's not just you watch it once, and but it turned out well, and 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 obviously you know Sarah was wonderful to work with, and the kids were adorable, and and Mac, our director, is is a a definite shining light for directors for the future for the network that we hopefully get a chance to work with him again. But uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see what Christmas movie I get this year. We'll oh, see. You think you're going to have a Christmas movie this year? Well, I think I would like to. I mean, I I, I, I can't decide. I mean, that's up to them. But. Um, you know, I, I did, you know, season, even though it's just the first of the year, you usually film during the snowy. Well, they'll, they'll start probably getting the banging out as many as they can here shortly, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I did mine at the end of the last year that right at the at the top. So um, 2019 shot half of it and then shot the rest of it in 2020. And then it didn't air for 10 months or whatever right. until November. So we'll see. Look, I don't I don't attach myself to anything i'm pretty free-spirited when they call for something i'll just i'll just do it with everything i got and, and uh, honored to be a part of the family when you go on location obviously this is before covid do you ever get the chance to take your family with you i mean i yeah i mean they the network has given me every every opportunity to fly them out or anything i would like to do uh with two young young children in, in well virtual school i guess you could bring them more now but just with COVID, uh, with their illness that she went through for a long time, it just was, it was more susceptible just to stay home and, and heal and be well. And she had other obligations, um, obviously, to deal with. And then with the young kids, we just, it just hasn't happened. And plus, when they come to see me, I know, I know the way I work. I'm so involved in it that it's not going to feel like they're out hanging out with daddy. It's going to be like, where's daddy? And, you know, because these days you get, I mean, I'll get up at four o'clock, four thirty in the morning and not get home till 10. So. Yeah. It's really not, not on board 8, 30, 9 o'clock or whatever, and then rehearse the next day. It's not really an environment that is conducive to us hanging out and have a vacation. So, um, but if I do go up and, and do three, four, five in a row or two in a row again, or whatever the case might be, I might, if there isn't a, a quarantine, I might uh, try to bring them out, you know? But now with modern technology, you get to see them on FaceTime and all these other things. So it, ah. it, it really adds more to being away, even though we're in quarantine, even now, even though I'm not traveling or on location, I can still keep in contact with people yeah. like you. And, yeah. uh, and, and that I think is the best part of technology. One final question, I know we're almost out of time. You've been acting professionally for 25 years. Um, and, and you are one of the main Hallmark Channel actors that everybody loves to watch on any, anything you do. But can, can you look back at any one thing that has been the highlight of your acting career so far? That's a tough question, but I, I don't mean to- oh, Man, that's, yeah, there's, so, there's really, man, I don't know. I'd have to think about the highlight. I mean, I have personal highlights, you know, breakthroughs in my work or um, I will say this that the last probably the last well I'd say maybe even all summer long I'm not sure but the last couple of like a year a year and a half um, it's getting easier for me if that makes any sense I can kind of I listen better to the script I'm more affected uh, my process is not there's certain things I, I don't need to do because I'm trusting myself. So I think just one of the things that's really happening is I'm evolving as an artist and, and trusting myself and my instincts. And obviously, um, you know, and obviously when you're a new actor into this, this brand called Hallmark, it, it goes fast, it goes quick. And, um, you know, once you can do it well for them, they want you to be a part of that family because not everybody can. I mean, it's, it's, it is tough. And I've had some, some movies where I'm probably, I'm drowning too in the beginning. I remember when I did Nanny Express, 
I mean, I was cast, someone else was cast, I think, before me and fell out, if I'm not mistaken, because I wasn't even, I got the offer on a Thursday night and I was on set Monday. And I remember going, just going, I mean, I'm on like every page here, like what's happening here? You know, I don't even know if I can do this. And so from that, which was in 09 to where I'm at now, that wouldn't, that wouldn't scare me. You know, I'd be like, all right, well, it is what it is, you know? Um, and we've had experiences. They work very qu quickly. They they just churn them yeah. out, which is why <laughs> their fans like them. And your Brenny fans are just loving you. And we will look forward to Valentine's Day. For your yeah, I think it's I think it's you know Terminal Descent is is a very uh, um, it's a lot of fun. I am um, like I said, Peter Benson directed that one. Who is an actor who plays the I think the lead detective or one of the lead detectives on Aurora Tea Garden. Uh -huh. uh, lovely, lovely actor and 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 director and human being. Um, and uh, I think the fans are going to be it's much well-deserved. They've been very patient. We are looking forward to this. And thank you again for being my first guest and now my, my current guest. And I well, want it's good to, to see you again. And I hope one of these days we can see each other in person again. That would, I miss those days. So it's good. I know. Oh, I'm not, I, I was talking to my mom the other day. I was like, you know, I don't want, you know, I'm, I'm a hugger and I'm a, hey, you know, I mean, um, and as an artist, you want to be connected. It's, it's just, it's very, very, that's been the hardest part for me is not being able to, you know, take the kids to a restaurant or go, go get something and, and sit with your wife and have a date night or go and meet a friend for a cup of coffee or, 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 you know, I, cause gyms aren't open. Churches aren't open. Malls aren't open. Nothing's open. And I'm not the kind of guy that can sit in my room and, and, and buy the Peloton and do all, I mean, this is my office. So, but I've been walking like three and a half miles to five miles a day. And it's been really, really, I really enjoyed it. I'm not a walker. I'm usually go to the gym and, and it's been nice, but it's like you walk for a couple blocks, you see him being, you put a mask. It's just a very different world. And uh, I will get through it. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping by, by the summer, we'll all be back to some sense of normalcy or hopefully, but it's, um, I really, you know, I know this sounds cliche and you hear it probably from many, many guests or any, any anybody you interview from Hallmark. But I think being a part of Hallmark as one of their actors um, and being a part of their family, I, I take that very seriously and with a lot of pride because I really believe that in this world, um, they're, a, they're a staple for posit positivity, you know, and I think that there's something to say to that, you know, whether, you, whether you're watching a movie or, or that you like or don't like, or maybe this isn't the way you want to watch tonight, you'll always be swept away and feel a little better when it's over. And I think there's something really positive in that. And That's they should be very proud. That's yep. why I watch it. Well, thank you very much. And for the viewers, I will see you next time when we take another look beyond the red carpet. And uh, stay safe, everybody.